Hello everyone and welcome back to Chill Vibes Only. Today's video is going to be on how to talk to your partner about sex um, and specifically how to bring up um, concerns you may be having in your sex life around your pleasure um, to help kind of close that pleasure gap. So uh, I'm going to be speaking from a cisgendered woman's experience um, from what I've read. Um, so just a quick disclaimer on that end. Um, so this is going to be primarily for people who are in heterosexual relationships. Um, but you can also use these tips, I think, for same-sex relationships as well, actually, now that I think about it. But I'm just saying that I'm speaking primarily from a cisgendered woman's experience and tips and tricks I've learned for how to communicate to my partners about sex um, and sharing that with you guys so you can hopefully bridge some of that awkward or um, uncomfortable conversations um, that we tend to avoid but matters so 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 much in our happiness and in the healthiness of our relationship too. Um, we depend on our partners for so much and we have such intimate bonds with them but sometimes we still don't feel comfortable talking about sex or our sex lives with them and um, it shouldn't be that way. So I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks and tools that you can use to start to talk to your partner about sex. Um, and hopefully start to close any pleasure gap that you may be experiencing in your relationship. Um, and by the pleasure gap, I mean if you are constantly not having orgasms or not experiencing pleasure during um, sex or sexual activities with your partner, um, and they are, this is going to help you better communicate what you're looking for and what you need in the bedroom and what you kind of expect from them. So my first tip is um, to think about where you're going to have this conversation. So what I would recommend is actually having it um, either in the car or when you're out for a walk. I wouldn't have it like in your home necessarily. Definitely want to have it in your bedroom. Um, you want to have it in like a neutral place where um, you know you're not going to taint that environment based off of the conversation that you're having. So like if we tend to have a lot of awkward or uncomfortable or hard conversations or even arguments in the bedroom, the bedroom starts to hold this kind of negative energy in there um, and that doesn't help us for relaxing um, and trying to be at ease in those spots in our home and um, in our lives. So same thing goes for like working, like I would never recommend working in your bed because when you get into bed, you're just gonna think about work. So don't argue um, or have kind of tougher, awkward conversations in bed either. Um, so yeah, you want to think about where you want to have this conversation. Like I said, I would recommend either in the car or when you're walking. And the reason why I recommend that is just because um, you should be having this conversation doesn't mean that you need to have eye contact in this conversation. It can be kind of hard to bring up at first. And so being able to walk like side by side or sit side by side with someone and not have to make the eye contact right away um, can help you, you know, be more comfortable talking about this stuff and bringing this subject up. So that's my first tip, um, try to plan out a time and space where you guys can comfortably have this conversation. Um, so my second tip is about framing the conversation. So we definitely want it to be non-confrontational, we want it to be um, understanding, compassionate, um, and productive. So I always recommend, regardless if you're talking about sex or not, whenever you're going to have a hard conversation with someone, think about your intention and tell that person your intentions. And also to acknowledge the situation. So saying something like, you know, this is really uncomfortable and awkward for me to bring up, um, but I love and care about you deeply and I care about our relationship. And so it's important for me to have these conversations with you because I want you to always know where I'm coming from and I also want to understand you better. So like my intention for this conversation is to be really vulnerable with you and open up about some things that have been weighing on my mind lately about our sex life and I really want want to share them with you because I don't want you to feel like I am holding anything back or not being my authentic self with you. Setting the attention just kind of like lets that person know like, okay, like this is going to be kind of hard and uncomfortable and also gives that person the time to be like, hey, you know what? Today is not a good day for this. Can we do it next day, right? So just kind of giving some people some like forewarning of the conversation you're going to have so you don't catch them off guard and telling them what your intention is with it um, can help ease some of that stress. Okay, so my third tip um, is to listen first. Always try to listen first. So um, people can get on the defense if you come at them right away with your opinion. So I would always start with a question and curiosity um, or general interest actually is a really good tool for um, starting conversations like this. So you could just casually bring up to them like, hey, like, 
what do you think about our sex life right now? Like, how do you feel about it? Um, and that way you give that person the floor to kind of talk about it first and to either say like, yeah, like, I think it's really great. I really love this, 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 but, or like, maybe I'd like to try this or like, you know, I've been really stressed out lately and I feel like I haven't got a chance to connect with you sexually, or I feel like our desires are kind of off and like, just gives that person the floor first. Um, and it allows you to kind of see where their head's at as well. So maybe they might be feeling the same way you are and you can just agree with them and be like, yes, like I was thinking that too, or yeah, I really want to work on that. Um, but at least you know kind of where they're coming from and you want to listen and understand them first. So always seek to understand before you're understood um, and it definitely is going to help you to phrase the tone of the rest of the conversation because if this person kind of brings up things that you also really like, we can start to kind of, you know, highlight those things while then working in some things that you want to work on and I'll get to that in a second. So my fourth tip is to avoid the um, why questions because why questions um, can tend to make people get on the defense. Um, so instead of saying like, well, why do you think that? Or why do you think our sex life is fine? Because I don't think that. Um, that can make someone kind of get a little bit defensive and standoffish. So instead of saying something like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, could you maybe explain that more to me? I really want to understand. Um, that way it's not like it's going to put that person on the defense, it's just like, hey, like this person doesn't really understand what I'm saying and so I'm just going to explain further. While avoiding the whys, you want to also start using the I feels. So I feel statements are really powerful because again, it's not saying a fact, it's just saying how you're feeling and everyone's entitled to their own feelings, right? Regardless of if you agree with them or not, you're entitled to how you feel about something and I'm entitled to how I feel about something. And so when you say like, hey, I feel like our sex life hasn't been that exciting recently. Um, it's not saying our sex life hasn't been that exciting recently. Um, and then maybe putting that person on the defense being like, well, what do you mean? I'm so stressed out. I have all this stuff to do. How could you possibly expect it to be exciting? Um, that you're saying, hey, like, I just feel this way. And they can be like, okay, like, you know, I really want to understand that better. You know, using those I feel statements can kind of help just take down any, um, you know, tension or standoffishness um, and keep the conversation open and you don't even just have to use this for sex conversations I use this all the time um, something you want to avoid though is um, saying to someone I'm sorry you feel that way because intention doesn't negate impact right so even if your partner isn't intending to make you feel a certain way um, they're still impacting you in that way so saying oh I'm sorry you feel that way isn't always the nicest way to handle someone who's being vulnerable with you. So saying something along the lines of, I didn't know you were feeling this way and it hurts me to know that maybe my actions have caused some of this pain and I'm going to try to course correct that or I want to work with you on this. Um, those are better ways that you can kind of move around it and if it's something that you can't change and you're not willing to change, um, at least say like, you know, in the past I didn't know that, um, maybe we need to take a step back from this or maybe we need to change our relationship. Um, but saying I'm sorry you feel that way isn't really necessarily helping that person so I would avoid statements like that. Okay, and then my final tip is to try to use compliments as much as possible. And what I mean by that is that if you're trying to get your partner to go down on you more in bed, right? You want them to give you oral sex more. Um, and you don't want to say to your partner, like, you never go down on me. I never get oral sex from you. That's the only way I can have an orgasm. You're, you know, taking this from me. That's not always the way that you're going to get what you want. And it's always not always the nicest way to, to say to your partner that. So maybe you, you go down on them uh, often. You could say something like, you know, the other night when I was giving you oral sex, it really turned me on and like all I could think about in my mind was you doing the same to me and how hot that would be um, because I just love the feeling of your tongue, you know, on my vulva or something like that. Um, so phrasing it as a compliment is like, oh, it would just make our sex life so much better and it would make me like so much more turned on and da 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 um, I love when you do X, Y, Z, or I love the feeling of your tongue like in my mouth or like on my neck. I would love to feel it on my vulva. Like trying to phrase it as a compliment. So taking something that they're already doing um, and just like 
amplifying that more um, and kind of guiding them nicely towards what you actually want them to do instead of just blaming them for never doing it and saying you need to do this um, you know making it exciting phrasing it in a compliment like sex is such a vulnerable and intimate part of our lives and it's hard to talk about and it's people often get on the defense and they feel like something's wrong with them because they just haven't gotten the proper education or they don't know how to do something right like what if the reason your partner's not giving you oral sex is because they never were taught how to give oral sex and they or maybe someone you know said that they were really bad at it and that's stuck in their childhood and now they're too scared to ever try again because they don't want to be bad at it so like just trying to understand people um trying to be like super kind and like using compliments as a way to kind of get someone to be more open to hearing your feedback um are all powerful tools you can use to help you know, bridge these awkward conversations and uncomfortable conversations um, and hopefully enhance and improve your sex life. And to wrap this all up, it goes without saying, try not to fake orgasms. I personally have been there. I know the pressure it is to feel like you have to perform and like um, your partner is going to be disappointed or feel bad about them um, for not being able to give you an orgasm, but just understanding and, and saying to them like, hey, you know, only 20% of women have orgasms through P and D sex and guess what? I'm part of the 80% percent that don't um, so we got to do XYZ to get me there and I don't ever want you to feel like you're doing anything wrong it's not you it's just the way my body's made and this is how I have sex right like how you experience pleasure in sex doesn't mean the same way I'm gonna experience pleasure in sex and just creating open conversations around that and like being super authentic and like letting them know you know I was faking orgasms before because I felt this pressure to perform for you and I wouldn't ever want to make you feel bad about anything and that's why I did it um, I've had that conversation before it wasn't fun but at least it was like open and authentic and we worked on our sex life because of that conversation um, and it made me more powerful for future sexual partners to speak up and to say what I need and what I want um, and overall my sex life has improved so um, awkward and uncomfortable conversations have to happen but you can do it if I can do it you can do it um, I hope these tips helped you guys if you ever want to run something by me or talk about this just feel free to send me a DM or leave a comment down below um, my Instagram is at CBO wellness um, we have tons of other videos on our channel here so check it out share this with a friend or family member if you find it's gonna help them um, and yeah I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you for another video shortly